Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, now see your name should be right there. We talked about that this morning. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Notice it didn't say mountain, please be removed. It doesn't say God, please move the mountain. It says mountain, get out of my way. Right? And be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt. Now that word doubt is number 1252. Guess what? Diacrino. The word doubt is exactly the same word used up in James as wavering. To doubt is to waver, right? Same word. <clears throat> this, this man, it says, if he commands this mountain to be removed, be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt, not waver, not stagger <clears throat> in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, most people think they've doubted when they haven't. Let me give you an example. I use this all the time in the DHT. You go to the... You, heard about healing, you've heard, maybe been, been through the DHT, you're excited about it, and you go to the Walmart, and maybe you're there just shopping, and there you see a sick person. So when you, all of a sudden, the scriptures come back to, to your mind, what you've been learning, and you go, all right, here we go, we're going to do this thing. And, you, and maybe there's a little bit of a distance between you and that sick person, and you start walking toward them, and somewhere between your starting and where they are, a thought is going to hit your mind. What if it don't work? And then it'll snowball. Well, you'll look stupid. It'll look stupid. And you know you're, you're going to give God a black eye. It's amazing how the devil talks like that. But now notice, and a lot of people go, oh, yeah, what if it doesn't? Oh, well, now I've doubted, so I might as well not even try, because if I doubt it, it's not going to work. Okay, now listen carefully. At that point, you have not doubted. You have to get this. At that point, that thought is not the doubt. See, why? Because doubt is sin. Why? Because you can't doubt in faith, and whatever's not a faith is sin. So doubting is sin, right? And the Bible says, James actually says, that before a man commits sin, he has to first be tempted. So if you having the thought, what if it don't work? If that's the doubt, if that's the sin, where was the temptation? No, no, see, the thought, what if it don't work? That's the temptation. That's not the sin. That's the temptation to doubt. Now, the problem is the devil usually fools people and makes them think they've doubted, so they quit. But at that moment, if you could just freeze frame your life, you're walking, you have that thought, and you just freeze. At that moment, you have the choice of either backing off, hesitating, thoroughly separating it, in other words, trying to figure it all out, you have the ability to do that and back off into doubt and sin, or you have the ability to step forward and go, you know what? What if it does work? Why? Because it's going to work because the Bible said it. And you move right on over there and you say, excuse me, I want to set you free, or however you're going to do it. Do you see the difference there? Listen, the thought, what if it doesn't work, or what if it's not going to happen? That is not the doubt. That's the temptation to doubt. When you have that thought, your next reaction should be, Devil, it is written. I will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, Devil, you've apparently forgotten that. So watch. And then you go on and do it. Amen? Do you understand that? So I'm going to be bringing out these words from time to time. Words like rebuke. Repent, what those things mean. I'm going to be bringing these out so you'll get a clearer picture of it so that you'll be able to operate correctly. Amen?